Welcome to Inspired Artist Podcast with me, Porter Singer. I'm here with Guru Ganesha today. He has been a guest on this podcast before. In fact, one of the most listened to uh, episodes of my podcast. So I'm really happy to have him for a little uh, catch up, see what he's been up to. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Here we go. Okay, welcome, Guru Ganesha. Let me. Hey, Porter. Nice um, to see you. It's really nice to see you. Let me. See. There we go. Now we see you. <laughs> yeah. So, what have you been up to since last we? Oh my God. Well, <laughs> today I've been. Uh, my fingers are crossed about the midterm elections, and uh, you know I hate to tip my political. Oh, it's voting day. That's right. Yeah. That's it. And in a few right. hours, they start announcing some of the uh, results and right. hoping for the blue wave that we're all expecting, you know. Is that why you're wearing that turban? <laughs> oh, I actually did make a decision based on that today. Say, what am I doing <laughs> for the podcast? I don't even know if it's a video podcast. Or... <laughs> yeah, I, I will be releasing the video if that's okay with you. Um, and it'll be released on Friday, so you'll know by then, but... All right, as long yeah. as we can uh, doctor it up so I look 35, you know? <laughs> uh, I wish my, my uh, editing skills were that good. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have to be Because really... you look too young for 35. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm enjoying, uh, you know, some of the benefits of being uh, in your 70s, you know? What are what are those? Like, well, can you give me a preview? You have younger people around. They want to carry your bag and things like that. You know, see. That's you know, nice I, that you I like that. Use... <laughs> I offer sometimes, and I feel like older men are like, oh, "I'm not there yet." <laughs> well, uh, it, it, I, I actually, uh, uh, you know, am grateful periodically, depending on the weight of the bag, you know. But uh, you know, I joined a gym recently. And uh, uh, I've been going like four or five times a week. I hadn't gone to a gym and lifted a weight in like decades, you know. And uh, I haven't. But that really seems to, I'm feeling much better overall. I guess it's the resistance, not heavy weights, but just kind of light weights, a lot of repetitions. And uh, so enough so that you can carry your own luggage depending on its weight. I could, if I, if, if. <laughs> necessary i could carry my own luggage and and uh you know if uh you know there's a civil war i might be able to hold my own you know i'm, I'm praying that there won't be yeah <laughs> are you carrying much luggage these days uh well let, let's say i'm not doing a lot of traveling if i could be beamed places i might be out there a little bit more hmm. But the traveling is, uh, you know, it's, it's not quite the same as it was when I was 35 and 45 and 55 and 65, you know. It's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit more discomfort involved in it. But, uh, you know, Sankatar Singh and I started to, uh, we're getting out there and doing live music again, albeit not like some extended tour where every day you're either traveling or setting up, or you know what it's like. But, uh, you know, like one weekend every maybe six to eight weeks, we'll go somewhere where we've been invited, set up shop and play two nights in a row. And, and a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, two acoustic guitars amplified and, you know, lightly uh, 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 run through the PA. Yeah. But um, really encouraging everybody to sing along, you know. It's about, you know, it's funny. I was going to do it maybe 50% chants and 50% songs at this stage of my life. But once we got in there, people still love to chant. <laughs> they still love it. You know, we're doing a handful of songs, but most of the songs have an English chorus that people can get into. But it's so nice to be in like a smaller studio with, you know, 40, 50 people and, uh, and just share the good vibrations. Yeah. Everybody seems to need a break 
from the uh, geopolitical mess we find ourselves in. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and we've had, you know, in so many different, for so many different reasons, we've had kind of a loss of community. And at least I felt that. Um, yeah. So it's been, it's been nice to be able to be in spaces with people, I think. Um, yeah, it's uh, chanting uh, such a I great really group activity. Be, yeah, I was really glad to be out there and not just, not just in Zoom land. Yeah. I've actually done a bunch of music via Zoom over the last two and a half years, but it felt quite different to actually be be with fellow human beings and feel their energy and feel a, a greater aspect of each person, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you, you've, I mean, you say, I must know, I actually haven't really done much like the grind of touring where it's like every day I'm I'm more like in my 70s when it comes to my my touring regimen <laughs> that's my preferred way <laughs> once every six weeks <laughs> yeah I mean I think everybody's got to find their own rhythm yeah. you know and uh uh I I used to be uh what Sanonim Carr called a touring junkie <laughs> just needed my fix on a fairly regular basis you know it would be like I'd want to be out there six seven weeks and then be home six seven weeks then I was ready to be out there six seven weeks and then be home six seven weeks and uh, and uh, probably feeling guilty about it either way you know kind of if I was home feeling guilty about it mm -hmm. if I was out there feeling guilty about it but I'm kind of learning how to shed some of that Judeo-Christian guilt that I held on to so tightly, you know. Do you feel, why do you feel guilty when you're, when you're home? Is it because you should be doing more touring or you just don't feel like you have anything to do? Well, it's kind of like when you're home and enjoying the comforts of home, there's a part, there's a voice on the committee that's saying, hey, have you noticed what's going on out there? Shouldn't you be out there hip deep in it, helping everybody? So that, right, that voice, although that voice is calming down a little bit as I've gotten older, you know. Oh, so it's kind of like a, a musical missionary guilt. Uh, yeah, it's partly about the music and it's partly about just being out there doing anything to contribute. There's, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, if you believe what you see on uh, the different news channels, there's uh, a lot of suffering going on, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you know, a, a great teacher like a Thich Nhat Hanh, you know, he would encourage people to stay joyful, even under in, in, in the knowledge and compassion of all the suffering that's going on. Don't that don't let that kill your joy of living. Mm. Not, mm. You know, kind of a tightrope dance. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, I'm in Mexico right now, and I actually met this really I was wondering where you were. Yeah, well, I'm in an Airbnb actually right now, but I'm in Mexico and yeah, with this fabulous backdrop. <laughs> um, and I, I met this woman on the beach yesterday who spoke to my, my partner's sp Spanish speaking. So I was like catching two thirds of it. But what I got was like, oh my gosh, this woman's story. Afterwards, I was like, this woman shouldn't be selling sarongs on the beach. She should be like a motivational speaker because she just had such a, joyful attitude while telling us about her husband having beat her and having grown up not learning how to read and to write and to, i mean it was just like the things yeah. you know things i couldn't even imagine having to overcome why did i why did i get into this oh well, but, but but even when i think about those things i'm like how crazy would it be for this person to hear that with my life i'm not happy uh, uh. you know humble thing they yeah but you know I, I think everybody's inner universe is so unique yeah and, and, and so non-judgeable yeah know? yeah and yeah. so infinitely interesting too if you get into <laughs> you know and, and really start to listen to other people's stories that's one of the benefits i think of uh the aging process for me and slowing down is I've become more interested in other people. Mm -hmm. you know, I was so, so hyper-focused on what am I doing next? What am I, I'm trying to accomplish this or I'm trying to become this. 
but now I'm accepting, hey, I'm, it's okay to just be a being and be, and if you're fortunate enough to have another human being hang out with you either on Zoom or in your living room or something, you know, why not, uh, you know, get to know what their, <laughs> what their journey through inner and outer space has been like, you know? Yeah. I know this podcast, I'm supposed to be the one, but I'm like dying to ask you what's going on. <laughs> oh, we can have a conversation. That's okay. Um, well, let's see what's going on for me. Well, I'm, I'm in Mexico because my kids are with their dad who uh -huh. lives in Mexico. Oh, he lives in Mexico. Yeah. So uh -huh. I come here. Well, we haven't quite made it like a yearly habit yet or a pattern, but it seems like I'll be here once a year. To, uh, to kind of because I drop them off and then I don't want to leave them. <laughs> uh, I mean, I leave them. I don't see them, but like I don't want to leave the country. <laughs> uh, I know, so, I know. Um, so yeah, so then I'll take them back in three weeks um, or two and two weeks now. And uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of hanging out and I'm doing all my work from here. And um, I tried to set up some things, but it didn't quite work out. It feels sort of like, do you have that where like you try to set things up and it's just like okay i maybe i'm supposed to just be introspective right now uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, definitely so definitely more so that. now than maybe you know years ago but yeah i i understand that you kind of have to get clear on are you talking about like a gig yeah i was i was thinking about teaching a workshop while i was here ah, um, right, right. and it's just yeah just nothing nothing kind of aligned so yeah, I'm kind of like at the point where I love to be invited. Yes, yeah. To play music. Yeah. And then people seem to be more receptive to what your needs are to come totally. and do it, right? Totally. Is when you're like kind of the, uh, the hunter. Right, right. So we'll just put that out there. I'll be in Mexico once a year if anybody <laughs> would but, like to invite me to come to their place. Way, have I'll you come on in. It? Have you, I know you're listening to her podcast, but have you heard her sing? <laughs> it just opens the heart to mm -hmm. just listen to you sing. Yeah. And uh, I'm hoping at some point soon, uh, you know, we can get to play together again. Yeah, I would love that. I mean, just connecting with, because I moved like right before the pandemic, connecting with other musicians has been pretty yeah. challenging. I'm sure. So I know I'm people all over the place. I'm excited to see the museums in the D.C. area mm. or whatever. We have a nice place here where you can come and stay. And, oh, thank you. And we can all do some music, uh, living room music together. Oh, I would love that. I've been really missing that. Yeah, we'll take you to the Kennedy Center or something. <laughs> cool. Either to play. To play What's or, at the Kennedy Center? Huh? Oh, what's at the Kennedy Center? Well, they have the greatest concert halls, you know. I just saw Bob Weir with the uh, National Philharmonic Orchestra backing him up. You know, Bob Weir, the rhythm guitar player for the Grateful Dead. Oh, wow. Is Interesting. With the Kennedy Center with the Wolf Brothers. They kind of have a stand-up bass and drums, kind of, you know, country rock. And... He's got the Philharmonic, National Philharmonic behind him. And they're doing, because there wasn't a lead guitar player there. And uh, uh, so the Philharmonic are doing Jerry Garcia's lead guitar parts. I thought Jerry probably, if he was still around, would have like uh, been mind blown to use the term he would use to hear That's that. That's so cool. Amazing what, do, what people are doing uh creatively these days there's yeah. it's, it's a phenomenal surge in creativity you know it's kind of like the other side of the coin you know we got the pandemic we got the geopolitical situation we got the battle for democracy in the u.s and but then on the flip side artists are just because you know uh, 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 I'll, I'll use the word we because I feel I'm, in, I'm somewhere under that umbrella, but we feel things so deeply. And so there's so much to feel right now that there's people are just, you know, on a creative surge. I know you've been, correct? Yeah, yeah. In, in times it ebbs and it flows. 
Right. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, um, it's like, I don't know, it's like chasing light or something, you know, you just. <laughs> Isn't it nice sometimes when it ebbs? Because when it flows, you're, you end up putting up, putting out so much energy after That's a while. True. Please ebb a little bit. <laughs> You know, kick back and maybe watch a good binge on a good Netflix series or something. You know, that's true. Well, it's nice to keep that perspective that you like have enough. I think that's another part of like getting older. I can't say I have as much wisdom as as you do in that respect, but you know, I'm I'm getting there. Um, but like, you have that kind of reflection of like, okay, nothing's going on right now, but I know something will because this is the pattern of things. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that just comes with age, but yeah, after watching it ebb and flow and ebb and flow and ebb and flow for 50 something years, <laughs> after a while, you're like, you're now confident that when it's ebbing, that it will flow again. Yeah, yeah. And especially since I know more, you know, I'm a musician, and I know more musicians than anything else. Let's face it, you know, the, you know, uh, uh, when it's ebbing, you're not feeling it. But that fire in the belly always comes back. And all of a sudden you're like, oh God, I gotta play. <laughs> I've gotta do something. I've gotta sing. Totally. Are you are you recording? I know you just released something. Well, but... I just released, you know, maybe it was about six months ago, I think, where I released the final track on Born to Be Loved. You know, which is there's six tracks there, four of them originals, two covers. They're a little bit more reflective than stuff I did in the past that were all about, yeah, isn't everything great, you know? <laughs> and it also is uh, reflective of what the community has been going through and what I as an individual have been going through in the midst of it, you know? Kind of feeling, uh, uh, still kind of struggling in terms of where I'm landing, kind of feeling like I still got one leg in and one leg out, you know? But I got to get off that picket fence at some point, you know. <laughs> what, like, how, how are you experiencing that? I'm curious. Well, you know, uh, just, well, for example, my wife is, even though she totally believes all the folks that were victimized, she still loves a lot of what you know, especially the community aspects of it. You know, running a gurdwara, running a yoga center together with other people, yeah. singing regularly together with other people, just, you know, just getting together more often and caring about, you know, it's, I think to me, it was two things that brought me into, you know, Kundalini Yoga and 3HO is basically uh, 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 the singing. There were so many people who loved to sing and the people, I mean, you know, the whole thing started with a bunch of ex hippies, you know, basically in awe of this guy, to, you know, this six foot three inch super magnetic personality that, you know, came over from uh, the East and uh, spoke with utter certainty about things that we were confused as hell about. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, you know, being confused is exhausting too. So after a while, I think you're uh, susceptible to somebody who is speaking with utter conviction. Yeah. Well, I think that's the draw of any spiritual community, religion, whatever. It's like, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I've been, I've been wanting to know. <laughs> answers, answers, fine. Oh. <laughs> uh, and then you realize, well, maybe speaking with conviction is uh, more of the art than really mm. having the answers. Mm. I'm not sure. In any event, you know, kind of where I've landed is, you know, the dichotomy of it. You know, it's like, yeah, I look back and I, I can't say I didn't get some great stuff out of it, you know. Yeah. I'm still doing yoga. I still meditating, although I think I'm doing a more a, a, a deeper kind of meditation these days. Uh, I'm still chanting mantras, pretty good medicine. 
you know, still singing uplifting songs and still, uh, I still dig uh, components of the seat path and I still dig wearing a turban some of the time. Mm -hmm. so I, you know, I confess I don't wear it 100% of the time. I've, I've gotten into a few of my kind of ski cap things. But it's funny, after wearing a head covering for 50 years, it's been really hard for me not to wear a head covering, even if it isn't a turban, you know? Right, right. Imagine. It's part of how we become creatures of habit. Right. But partly not necessarily wanting to be identified as a budgenite, hmm. you know? Because I think I've transcended labels. At least I'm hoping. <laughs> or at least I'm trying to convince myself that I'm transcending being in a little box, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not living life according to anybody's rules these days. Are you? No. <laughs> it's, I mean, it feels good. About you. Well, I think, I think it's, it, you know, I sometimes I'll catch myself and I go, huh, why do I think that? Or why do I, why do I do that? And it's not always having to do with Kundalini yoga. It might be something my parents told me. Um, but I think I, I really softened because I couldn't do anything. I was really frozen. Like I couldn't stretch barely because I just felt so guilty, which was absurd because I hadn't done anything. <laughs> yeah. But but I did anyway, I guess I was just so absorbed in the pain that others had, you know, had others had felt from from this, but I kind of softened at one point and I was like, it's not fair that I'm punished like he's the one who did stuff like why am I punishing myself. Um, and you know i'm allowed to do anything that feels good to me, so yeah. I started chanting again and that felt. That was oh, really good. Started chanting again, yeah. Yeah, with with people like I hadn't picked anything up, you know. And then somebody asked me if I would do some online chanting with a group, and I was like, oh, "Yeah, maybe." So I went to my piano and I was like, "Yeah, this does feel really good." I forget what this is. I forgot what this was like. So yeah, I softened to that. I kind of stopped doing the yoga like a long time ago uh -huh. before, cause I was more into the music and the community. And um, so I'll do certain things. There's certain things I still do, but one, one of the things that I really loved, I interviewed um, Matthew Remsky. Did you ever yeah. read some of his yeah. stuff? And, you know, so he's kind of like this cult researcher and he said, you keep what you created. And I really love that. Mm -hmm. That resonates. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's it's yours now. It's not his because you've been doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was talking to somebody today. I won't mention their name. They said, yeah, I'm, I'm doing still teaching Kundalini yoga, but as taught by and then he put put his <laughs> I said, oh, good point, because let's face it, you have to trust that you can you know, get to a deep enough level where you can make adjustments and things or even put together a yoga set on the fly. Right. right. And have it be great. Right. Especially if you've been practicing yoga almost every morning for X number of years, you've got a pretty good sense as to what it is and how it works for you. And to me, that's the art is to not put yourself up on a platform and call yourself a spiritual teacher. It's you're a facilitator. Mm -hmm. You're just mentoring, but you're sharing with people things that you have applied to yourself that work for you. Not sure if it's going to work for anybody else, but, you know, saying, hey, try this. It's helped me with A, B, and C. I'm not into, all right, here, do these exercises exactly like this for 47 minutes, these 12 exercises, and uh, over 40 days, your liver, your liver cancer will be gone. Right, right. You know, I think those claims were a little bit uh, off-putting to me, even from yeah. the beginning. Huh. That we had, you know, and, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know if this set is going to cure, but do it and see if you feel better. If you feel better and want to do it the next day, right. do it. Right. Yeah. 
So I'm back to being the rebel I was when I joined 3HO and thought I was joining a rebellious organization, you know. <laughs> then well, we, it depends then on I, your perspective, you know. Huh? It depends on who's looking. I mean, I'm sure to your parents, it felt like you were rebelling quite a bit or, okay. you know. Yeah. And to my sister as well, you know. Yeah. My, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting how, I don't know, when, once an organization gets to a certain size, it becomes dangerous, you know, hmm. because it creates its own caste system. And then too many humans end up with too much power, which goes to their head. And some of them, if they're really spiritual, can think it's like divine ordination, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I think that we... Uh, you know, if we're going to keep a theme out in front of us, why don't we uh, keep the theme that we're all equal and we're equally great and we're all geniuses in our own way. You know, everybody's a genius in some way. Yeah. And if, you know, and then, you know, we share things. Hey, I love the whole concept. Well, person A is going to come over and fix your plumbing and in return, you're going to go and you're going to build a cabinet or whatever it is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back to the old idealism, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's sort of like the communist ideal, right? I mean, the only problem with communism in my mind is that no one's ever applied it because there's always somebody who wants to be in charge. That's right. That you want to hear a story from the early seventies at Himsa Ashram in Washington, Washington D.C. about our experiment there. Uh -huh. You know. There's over a hundred of us living in that community in four or five different houses, but we all, all the adults worked at the restaurant. We had this vegetarian restaurant. We said, you know, made everything from scratch every day. So everybody worked there. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm having a neurotransmitter blip and I forgot the point behind the story. What were, Oh, the communism, like oh, someone wanted to be in charge. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we were experimenting. I like that neurotransmitter blip. Oh, That's it's so good that you were able to help me with that. Uh, but if if I lose track of the story again, just say the word socialism. Okay. <laughs> but you know, we were also very idealistic, and some of us were thinking, "Yeah, socialism is the way to go. We'll share everything," and uh, uh, and we tried it for a while, where everybody was working. That was part of the problem. It wasn't everybody? You had real hard workers. You had some people who were mod worked moderately hard, and then you had the kind of the shirkers who always found a way to avoid the hard work. You know. However, the the uh, the uh, model that we had chosen as an ashram was socialistic, so everybody got room and board plus fifteen dollars, fifteen twenty dollars at the end of the week was all that was left. <laughs> I worked for a few months until the hard workers started getting really pissed off at the shirkers, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and that was the end of the socialism experiment after two fist fights broke out because person A was self-righteous about they were working so hard and they were only getting 15 bucks a week right. to the point where they were punching person B who was like hiding as much as possible <laughs> Right, right. That was what early ashram living was like, you know. But I feel like that's, you know, we all, I, I don't know, I mean, I think as a, I don't know, as like a compassionate human, you want there to be some sort of system like that in place. But then there's also that reality that like not everybody contributes, you know, I mean, if, if everybody did contribute, wonderful, you know, then it would work out really well, but not everybody does so a meritocracy in that case seems to be more fair or or more maybe more motivating i don't know does it i don't know it it doesn't even seem like the meritocracy motivates the shirkers all that much you know yeah uh, and and I, I i there must be a, i i must find a more loving expression for the shirkers or <laughs> The artist. The artist. I just, I just picked. I just borrowed that one from you. What with the, the, uh, the coasters. <laughs> that was quite a band back in the fifties and sixties. The coasters. Mm. But in the event, you know what? You know, in the late sixties, we were, we all had to. We wanted to change the world, so we we worked our rear ends off trying to change the world, and the world didn't want to change much. 
And then in the 70s, we decided, you know what? All right, maybe we can't change the world, but at least we can change the people around us. <laughs> <laughs> so we tried that for a few years. That didn't work. Right, <laughs> right. In the 80s, we figured, geez, <laughs> there's no other option. We better change, you know, you got to change the self or nothing else is going to happen. Oh my God. Or not, or now the thing is, you know, I've been doing these meditations with Panache Desai in the morning, and he's just all about, hey, accept yourself, man. <laughs> exactly as you are. Mm -hmm. You're not broken. You don't need to be more spiritual than you are. And I don't know, I'm listening to this kind of facilitated meditation. I'm going, you know, maybe this is the lazy way out for me, but I'm digging these concepts, you know. No, I think that was that was eventually the concept that kind of started getting me to ask some questions about what I was doing because I was like, I seem to be trying to fix myself all the time. <laughs> it gets exhausting, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, also, I mean, maybe you find the same thing, maybe not, but I feel like when you accept yourself, that's actually when the change happens because then it you're nothing wrong in the first place. Yeah. You, you know? know, you yeah but yeah i think they you know i mean your generation and then the 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 younger generation below you are gaining more and more wisdom in terms of just not everyone mm. but it seems like the majority of the younger generations are accepting more accepting not only of themselves but of everybody else and everybody else's choices Mm -hmm. it seems am i wrong you must have your finger more on the pulse of this no i think let, that, live, let live mentality going on yeah i think that it it as with anything right like when when a new con i don't know that acceptance is a new concept but maybe like embracing of acceptance is a new concept but you kind of get like the two sides of it where there's like an a kind of like overindulgence aspect to it. And then there's like a genuine, you know, acceptance. And I think right. hopefully it'll balance out a little bit because I don't think that just harming yourself and saying all is well is right. where right. you want to be, right? Right. So yeah, I was talking about that with Grant in this other podcast. He was like, watching Netflix and eating a carton of ice cream and calling it self care isn't quite <laughs> form of self care. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's definitely Yeah, well, you, you know, it's like it I don't know it, it I guess it depends on how you do it. But like, love like loving yourself can can take many shapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think by giving your your yourself permission to explore, you know, aspects of self that yeah. maybe you weren't willing to explore before well and that's the thing you like not punishing yourself for it right. maybe accepting okay that wasn't the best thing for me but like i love that i explored that yeah i mean yeah. you know on, on a certain level i mean us right at this moment we're kind of a product of everything that's happened prior to this point and you can kind of either accept it all as the perfect preparation for what's to come. And, uh, you know, and, and that's kind of the way I'm looking at it these days. You, you know, there was things that I could label as, well, this was good and this was bad. And this, no, I think, you know what, maybe I'm accepting all of it as part of the universe's prescription for me, mm. you know? I've had a lot of joy and happiness and fun in my life and tragedy and pain like anybody else. But genuinely, I, I kind of, uh, I, I, you know, I, and some people look at me like, uh, how, well, how can you have this kind of approach? But I, I still believe in a benevolent God or, you, you know, a force that kind of runs on a very, very subtle level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe even down to the electron, proton, neutron, electron level, you know, that uh, somehow is trustable. Hmm. So yeah. just the fact that I, you know, it's, it's 
you know, I try to explain it with my intellect, but it's more a feeling as of deep okayness. Maybe because as a, as a young child growing up, I wasn't like deeply betrayed mm. the way a lot of people, you know, if you really listen to their stories, somebody close to them betrayed them on some horrific level. Yeah. And it becomes then becomes hard to trust, period. Yeah. Yeah. And life, life is really challenging without trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that is that is really hard. And yet, the best thing for them would be to try and trust again, right? I mean, that would feel better ultimately, even if it's scary. And I understand why it's super scary. Well, it maybe it becomes easier, for example, to trust others if one can significantly reduce the expectations they. I mean, so many of us, if you ask somebody, well, what's your expectation of this person? They can give you, you know, well, I expect this, 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 and this, but it's never been pre-discussed with that individual. <laughs> <laughs> For example, a husband and wife kind of situation. Right. Well, those expectations may have been planted in there by the culture, by other people and so forth, not necessarily the couple. And then a lot of this can be a lot of dissonance around, well, she's not meeting my expectation. Well, you never even discussed it with her dummy. Right. And maybe it was an unreasonable expectation. Yeah. But so what I'm trying to practice now is reduce my expectations of other people, even people close to me to as close to nothing as, as is po humanly possible. Mm -hmm. And then it's always, wow, Every day we're getting like, wow, I can't believe it. That's awesome. I love that. That's so great. But it's much easier for the other people to exceed the expectations. Right. <laughs> it's a joyful response, you know? Yeah. That's really sweet. That's like that's like the beginner's mindset, right? Yeah. I that in my business, you know. I, I mean, I, I have a business partner in my sales training business, and we just have no expectations for the other. The other person can do whatever they want, totally supported by the other. And as a result, we're constantly kind of amazing the other person <laughs> by accomplishing anything is, you know, a source of, <laughs> of great celebration. <laughs> this, this makes me think of, so my, my partner, Juan, he, he really loves reality TV shows. And I thought I hated reality TV shows. But we've been watching these like kind of matchmaking ones and to watch yeah do you, have you seen them to oh, watch yeah, like fun. the the reflections that people have or just to like watch people get into arguments is so yeah. revealing i'm like oh my gosh i do that i think yeah, you know it, it gives you the ability I mean, you're stepping outside of it and you're saying oh this is the dynamic that's taking place that when i'm emotionally involved in it i don't even see it yeah but it just it comes back to what you're saying about expectations there's so many unspoken expectations that sabotage all these relationships that you're watching and it's oh. sometimes never spoken right right people could be married for decades and right. never have a discussion by the way what are you expecting out of me on a <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd ask since we're sleeping together and living together and making a thousand decisions together. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever, have you, have you and, and Mata Mundrakar asked that? I mean, is that a conversation you have? Funny, I just inspired myself to ask her that question. But I, I think we have a much better understanding of, of that than we did. And I, you know, and, I, and one thing I had to drop is I tried to lower my expectations without pressuring her to lower her expectations, mm. because that's another controlled trip. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll do this. I'll be nicer if you're nicer. Right, right. <laughs> or I'll give you more freedom if you give me more freedom. <laughs> it's kind of like, ultimately, you have to be willing to do things unconditionally sometimes. Mm. And, and and to step back and see what kind of impact they have. Yeah. But, you know, hey, we had this pandemic for two and a half years, and many of us were in very close quarters with, uh, you know, a very small group of people, if anybody. Yeah. So things change for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. 
Yeah, that was basically the beginning of my relationship that quarantine period, which was a very interesting way to... You know, you seem a lot happier. Am I wrong? Oh, I'm so much happier. <laughs> yeah. Well... Just an observation, but I thought I checked yeah. if there was any accuracy. And, I, and I'm not just saying, oh, it's because of a relationship, but just yeah. you just seem to be freer, more comfortable inside yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, and I'm not sure if you have this, because I know this is something that a lot of musicians have, is this trait of perfectionism. And so even like oh. without the impossible standard of 3HO, I had one also for myself. And so, gosh, I mean, I put myself under so much pressure, so I feel like I've released a lot of... Yeah. needless pressure yeah no 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 it doesn't go away overnight you know yeah. i'm still dealing with that and it's a process you know my very high expectations of myself and my inability to, to reach those expectations you know <laughs> but it's like that's why i'm enjoying the, these meditations with the uh, panache to side which by the way are free i thought wow that's revol revolution i've never heard of of him you know i i learned about uh him through uh Dr. Shamrong and um, okay. and Arjun Kar, his wife. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were they were finding you know through all, everything that we've all been going through, and they were finding some great solace. He doesn't claim to be anybody's teacher. He basically said nobody really needs a teacher, but that uh, you know uh, uh, we have. I mean, his skill is helping facilitate people into a very deep meditation hmm. where you're just basically return your essential self of just trillions of cells vibrating hmm. and uh, cool. you know and even letting go of all your own uh, you know identities identifications you know we uh -oh. we've got ourselves in a box i'm this i'm this i'm this. everything we say we are is a role that we play but that isn't really who we are right Right. Even the I'm a Sikh business, I'm a yogi, I'm a Sikh, I'm a, you know, I'm a citizen, I'm a Democrat, I'm a father, I'm, I, I, don't you think the average person has probably well over a hundred different roles they play? But what happens if you, you peel all of those away? What's left? So that's kind of uh, what I've been meditating on, that kind of just pure nothingness energy or pure light, but it it's like, and, and you start losing your desire to be somebody like, oh, I was somebody to begin with. Mm, mm. I just forgot and decided I needed to be somebody. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mind trip. That's a mind trip, right? Because you're comparing yourself to everything and everybody and all the norms and say, well, geez, I need to be a little special, don't I? I mean, every morning I wake up and it's me. Shouldn't I stand out somehow? It's quite the intense conditioning that we get as as children, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because, and hey, somebody you reminded me. What's huh? that? No, I was just saying, you know, it's like, dream big. You can be whatever mm. you, you know, whatever yeah. you want to be, whatever you, uh okay that's one approach <laughs> you know the only danger with that is uh what happens if you keep setting the bar up here and then you keep being bummed out with yourself for not being able to you know so i'm, I'm realizing there's a lot of different approaches yeah to the living life experience yeah i was talking i think it was the last podcast i did um with this channel and she was saying um, well, the, the download she got was that we're all kind of looking for that unconditional love that really none of us get as children. And so we're looking for the mother and the father to give us this unconditional love. Ultimately, it's only going to come from ourselves, ourself. but, um, that dream big, I think it's not just like, cause that's kind of, that's a nice concept that you can do anything, but the underlying message is like, that's what I want from you. That's what's going to make you lovable. That's what's going to make you. Right. You know. 
it's like, gee, if I'm able to become this world-class dancer, then I'll have all the love that I want and yeah. deserve. And, and it's just, you know, it's just be being discerning and kind of just stepping back and, uh, I don't know, maybe that's just the, the uh, result of being 72 years old, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and just wanting to kind of just appreciate life exactly the way it is at this exact moment in time and space, you know? Absolutely. Where do you find that Panache Desai meditation? I, I can share that with people. Oh, yeah, and, and it's not like I'm campaigning for Panache <laughs> because he does have some products he tries to upsell people. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people buy them, but I... I just, you know, I, 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 I made an oath to myself. I'm not going to pay for any more spiritual teachings. Sure. The amount of money I spent on spiritual teachings, right? <laughs> Courses and treats could have, could have, you know, put my grandchildren through college. I think. <laughs> but he has every morning. He has he has a website called panashdesai.com. I think it's dot com. But or you can even do a Google search. But yeah. his first name is spelled P A N. A C H E. You know, us ashes and eshes are stick together, Ganesh, Ganache. <laughs> There's a lot of that in, in the Indian language. Ganache is a um, chocolate dessert in French. Is it really? <laughs> yes. I wish I'd been named that then. Guru Ganache. <laughs> well, actually, and panache in French means a mixture, it's like a, an eclectic mix. Yeah, but anyway. Well, he is. He's very he's of Indian ancestry, uh, uh, but he's very much a an observer of all of life and has a great sense of humor. But mainly, so if you but if you go to his website, you register for Call to Calm. It's now it may not be as convenient time wise as it is for me, but it happens Monday to Friday from nine a.m. Eastern time. Okay. And uh, it's just twenty minutes. And what's nice is I've been finding having somebody whose whole focus is guiding you into deep, deep, still meditation is like, it's much easier for me to get there than just doing it on my own, although I'm getting better at doing it on my own, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he also gives you a lot of incredible imagery, but most of his focus is on really more fully embracing the self and you know and forgiving yourself for you know whatever you've been uh beating yourself up about and accepting the past mm. as filled with many gifts of a, of a wide assortment in terms of preparing you for now and what's to come and mm. i don't know i find that very soothing i i know you know the whole 3ho thing that we all went through and we're still going through is you know, I was giving myself more of a hard time than I was giving Yogi Bhajan in my own inner, you know, inner workings, my own self-talk. Just right. kind of stepping back and wondering, you know, trying to understand how I could have been so blind to so much. And even seeing certain things, but not wanting to be open to other implications. Because, you know, I had a pretty life, pretty good life going on. And I had come from a point and, uh, you know, just pre 3HO was I was, uh, you know, borderline suicidal, you know. So it, yeah. uh, it makes you very susceptible to the kind of, what do they call it? High something group. Oh, um, I forgot the term. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's a high demand group. High demand group, yeah. Like yes, 3HO f falls or fell under that umbrella, you know. Mm -hmm. so what do we have about seven, eight minutes left? Yeah. Actually, can I just correct myself? Because panache actually means verve or flair, not mixture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I think that's wrong. Not important, but I just want that to be on the record. Yes, what would you like to do in the next six minutes? 
I was just going to ask you that. Oh, okay. No, I, I mean, I don't have like, um, uh, I don't have like a schedule or anything, but maybe you'd like to share with everyone, um, how they can get in touch with you. If you have a mailing list or a website or things like that. All right. Well, um, of course, to get to the music, which I would be most uh, grateful mm -hmm. if you checked out some of the tunes, uh, it's on, um, of course, Spotify, all the major streaming platforms under two things, under Guru Ganesha Singh for my solo stuff, and then under Guru Ganesha Band for the four or five albums I did with the, with the guys. Uh, and uh, Paloma Davy did a couple albums with us, and uh, and uh, yeah, check out the some of the new tunes. Undying on the Born to Be Loved album is a really beautiful. It's it's, it's a putty from Japji, but the English is by Cutten. Hmm. It's all about you know kind of the journey between shadow and light that we all go through and. Um, that track is called, uh, uh, Mysterious Pathway. Oh no, that track is called Undying, but, it, but it's in particular, it's a tribute to the folks that have been leaving and mm -hmm. folks left behind. And, uh, I think from what people telling me, it's, it's, uh, it's been helping them, you know, just with the grief. Hey, mm -hmm. there's no cure for grief. Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to let yourself feel it. And, you know, sometimes certain sound current can really help with the, the processing of it and help you feel the love because that never, that love for the other person never dies. Yeah. They yeah. kind of become something else, maybe the sky. You know? Yeah. You look yeah. at the sky and you think of that person. So. Totally. Um, but yeah, the, the music is uh, deeply reflective. And, uh, and then also I'm starting to do some live stuff with my uh, bandmate of many years, uh, Sakatar Singh. He's a wonderful singer, wonderful guitar player. We, we rehearsed this afternoon. It's sounding so good. You know, I guess, uh, and, you know, if you, if you work at it long enough, you know, you can start to create something really special, but uh, it's kind of become intuitive. We have so many chants and songs that we know together on the guitar. And, you know, we're doing complimentary stuff, both with the guitars and vocally. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, if you happen to be in Northern Virginia or the Metropolitan Washington, D.C. area, Saturday night, November 9th, uh, uh, November 19th, that's Saturday night before Thanksgiving, we'll be at the beloved uh, Yoga Sanctuary uh, with uh, uh, their wonderful director, Mariam, um, doing a uh, concert from 7.30 to 9.30. But we all call it a co-formant because we're going to be encouraging you to sing or dance or, you know, or close your eyes, but whatever the spirit moves you to do. But there's still some space available to, for that concert. And you can get to it through guruganesha.com, which then kind of lands you on the Bright Star. My, son's, my son owns Bright Star live events, you know. I think he's done a beautiful service to the mind, body, spirit part of the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, if you can go check them out live, go do it. That's so fun. Yeah, I wish I could do that. When are you playing uh, live soon? I have no plans to play live soon, but well, I have, I have intention to play live soon, but I have no concrete plans to play live soon. So TBD, we'll see. So you're, but when you're not in Mexico, where are you generally? I'm in Washington, but the other coast. Washington state. Yeah. Well, maybe sometimes we talk about if I came out there, maybe we could do a, a couple of nights together at a local venue you know Ooh, there's somebody there so who might cool. smile that would be so cool yeah i would love that we could decide on which of each other's songs we want to do in advance and then come with at least enough time for a day's rehearsal i, I love it folks would turn out for <laughs> i love that yeah why not okay let's keep it in mind i'll put it on my bucket list okay okay cool yeah i'd love that all right 
Well, thank you so, so much for being willing to do this and for sharing what you've been up to with everyone. Well, I hope your listeners enjoy. I hope we said something that they enjoy. <laughs> There's uh, something in here. <laughs> something. All right. Love All right. You. Bye. Love you too. Thanks for tuning into the podcast, y'all. Please like, subscribe, rate, comment, whatever the platform you listen to podcasts on offers you as a way to let its algorithm know that you're enjoying these episodes. That really helps. Also, there's some links in the podcast description notes that allow you to support the podcast in a way that benefits you and us. So please check those out. And if you'd like to stay in touch with me, you can sign up for my mailing list at portersinger.com. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye.